So uh, today we're going to do this small side table. This is a table I built about four years ago, and it's been in the house. It's gotten kind of scratched up from this normal wear and tear and so forth. But it's a kind of a classic design. It's a design I made. Um, it's got a single, uh, it's all oak, oak top. On the top here, there are some inlays that I cut out and put in there, some simple little squares. It's got a, a round base to it, and it's got a single pedestal with three fluted legs. Kind of a classic style of table, but it's unique. There's not another one in the world just like this one because I designed it. And also in the front, it's got a little hidden drawer that comes out. Perfect for putting your TV remotes or something, uh, you know, magazines, books, those type of things. It's a great little build. And again, I built this four or five years ago, but I have like some old video clips that I've kind of pieced together and edited. And I'm going to narrate and just talk about woodworking and just craft a little bit while I do this. So what I'm going to do in this video is I've got my, uh, my MacBook up and I'm going to watch the, the clips and then talk a little bit about what's going on here and just uh, some general stuff about woodworking. So first of all, I've got the top for this table and it's three quarter inch oak stock, just plain white oak. Boards are four to six inches wide. I'm gluing them up and it's basically... Um, when you glue up boards like this, keep it simple. Have a good joint edge. Don't over tighten things. You just need a good firm contact point for the glue to take shape. And then once uh, this is glued up uh, and dry basically, the next step we're gonna do is start working on our, our three fluted legs. And I used a French curve basically to lay out my initial leg. And this is just my own design, what I thought the leg should look at, looking at some, you know, some old design books and so forth. Kind of a classic little table leg. And so I've got one already cut out <clears throat> and I'm taking basically a, a fine pencil and just doing an outline of what needs to be a leg and what doesn't need to be a leg. After this, the next step will be going over to the bandsaw and cutting out the rough shape. So this table really has four major components. There's the, the three legs, the center pedestal, the top, and then the, uh, the round uh, base for the table and where I curved uh, some oak to do that. So, then this stock here is about one and three quarter inches or one and a half inches uh, thick. Now I'm over at my bandsaw and I do a lot of work on the bandsaw. I'm adjusting the guides down. I don't want a whole lot of blade exposed because it makes a truer cut. It's also safer as well. As far as all the tools in the shop, as far as stationary tools, the bandsaw is the tool that I go to the most. You can do so much with a properly tuned bandsaw. Uh, if I was going to set up a, a shop all over again, or somebody asked me what's the first big tool or stationary tool you should buy, I would always say the bandsaw. Uh, you can do so much with it from fine detail work to resawing to making pretty true and accurate miters if you have your saw set up correctly and take some time to set it up and have good quality guides and good quality blade. The blade here I'm using, I think this is a half inch blade. I use a half inch blade for about everything. You, you, you can go down to as far as a eighth inch blade or three quarter or one inch blade for resawing, but half inch blade does about everything you need. So uh, here I am working through that leg and uh, the bandsaw doesn't give you a really smooth cut. Some people say, oh yeah, you can cut, you know, smooth on it. Well, I've never had that, that luck. So, um, after you cut on the bandsaw, you've got to sand it, okay? And since this, this is a curved piece, I'll be sanding this on my really cheap uh, drum sander here in a minute. But again, I'm just working that um, leg through there, cutting the outline of it. And again, this is gonna be mounted into the pedestal using a mortise and tenon joint. Um, so as we cut this on down, the next thing we're gonna be doing is taking over to my little cheap uh, Harbor Freight uh, drum sander and just uh, taking all the cut marks out and having a smooth piece. Also, I'll be routing the edges to put a flute, a little fluted detail on here. I didn't film that. Again, this video is, these video clips are four or five years old. Just going through the stack of videos on the 
hard drive and just putting them all together. So again, just kind of work that through. Uh, this sander makes short work of that. Now I've got the main pedestal and I'm cutting off the cheeks. This is basically about a four and a half by four and a half inch block of oak that I've glued together with a couple, a couple of three pieces. And I'm cutting off the cheeks that's gonna be part of the mortise and tenon joint that the legs will go into. So, uh, it's about 18, 20 inches long, this is. And then I turn my table saw, or my, my band saw, I'm sorry, to the proper angle to cut off the angles because I got three legs going into a four-sided piece. There's an angle there of, it's about 35 to 40 inches. And I'm cutting off the cheeks, again, to make a place for my mortise and tenon joint. Now the band saw gets real close here, but as you'll see in a minute, you have to do some fine work with some chisels. And here we go, I'm cutting off uh, one of the, um, one of the miters there using a small uh, fret saw, a little fine saw for doing this kind of work. I'm getting kind of working this back and you'll see in a minute uh, what the final result of this cut here uh, looks like. So, you know, good, wood, good woodworking, using hand tools, power tools, you can use all hand tools. And there we go, that's the end where the legs will go into. And that's rough, it's gotta be uh, um, chiseled down and so forth. So now I'm taking my Narex chisels, love these chisels. These are made in uh, uh, Czechoslovakia. And kind of working that joint down to where it should be. <coughs> Excuse me, doing this kind of work is fun because now you're getting into the finer part of woodworking. And um, you know, power tools save you a lot of time, but this is true woodworking here. Now I've got a mortise that I'm chiseling out. I've drilled some holes and this is what the legs will go into. So again, I'm using the various size uh, Narex chisels and kind of working that in. And what I love about this part of woodworking, this is where patience comes in. You know, the more time you spend, the slower you go, the better your end result will be. Um, you know, that's one thing that makes, I think for a lot of people, woodworking relaxing is that you're working on something, you're working on a process on something, and it's just the process itself. Yeah, you love the end product, you love when people say, wow, that's a pretty table or a pretty guitar, or it's a fine piece of furniture, but the building part of it is what's enjoyable. And this is uh, extremely relaxing to sit there at my bench, clamp in a piece of wood, take some uh, chisels and just and just have at it, okay? Uh, kind of forget all the stuff of the day, put some. And now basically I'm now cutting the cheeks off my legs. I've got that small fret saw again, cutting those down. I really can't do this on a power tool very well. And this is pretty cool right here. This is a jig I built to, build, to cut circles. So I'm taking an old router. This router is about 35, 40 years old. And I'm working it around that tabletop that I glued up. At center of the top, I've got a pin. And I've got this simple jig where I can make different size tabletops. And I work this around to cut it. You could also cut this on the bandsaw or even on, you can cut a circle on a table saw. But I find this right here is the, uh, uh, is the easiest way to do it and gives you a good clean cut. Okay, so. And then next is a still shot of the chisels from the, the, the top of the piece itself where I'm cutting in the, um, uh, the inlays. I didn't video that per se, um, but simple checkerboard where I cut in about an eighth of an inch, chisel that out and cut some small wood squares to go in there. And then here's a picture of the top where I took several thin sheets of oak, um, got them wet and then bent them around a jig that I built with clamps to kind of shape them. So it's fairly simple, okay, as far as this goes. So obviously there were a lot of things that video I didn't show you all the details on. So I'll kind of turn over this table and show you again. Um, here's the, in, here's the, you can see that okay, here's the inlays. Simply took a chisel, chiseled out a square, put a little piece of wood in there at an opposing angle. On the top here, I did take a, a small piece of oak banding and put all the way around the table. Uh, basically, glued that on so you wouldn't see the, the end grain of the table. And also, I didn't show you basically how this drawer is built, but this drawer is extremely simple. It's pine, with a little piece of, with a little Luan uh, base to it. And again, fairly simple. It's a friction type of drawer. 
And then down here is the joint where the uh, where the legs came in basically that I was showing you where I cut that and then put those in. I put a small piece beneath here that I can unscrew and that way I can take the leg off if I want to move the table. Okay. So again, it's not a hard project. It's not a it's not a crazy project to do. Uh, you know, sit down on a piece of paper, draw out what you want to do, look at some uh, some some pictures, some catalogs, some ideas, get your dimensions, and just have at it. And again, uh, this little table here, people ask the question, well, what did it cost to build it? It's not about the cost. There's probably only maybe $20 worth of wood in this table. But the labor, of course, is what, you know, takes all the time. Um, so you don't build furniture like this in order to save money, necessarily. You build furniture like this furniture like this because you want something something nice for your home or nice to give to somebody else. So again, this video is a little different. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, leave a comment. Uh, like and subscribe. We've got a bunch of more content coming. Uh, some different kind of stuff coming up as well. So again, thanks for watching and have yourself a fine day.